hit record are we recording i think we are all right <laughs> you never tell us. what is going on ladies and gentlemen unlike me incorrectly saying last episode was episode 20 which it was not this is actually episode 20 eddie we still have i still messed up the intro when i was doing the pre-recording intro somehow i said episode 20 even though it was episode 19 even though during the episode we said episode 19. you said 19 i remember yeah but this is episode 20. like we have somehow some way some shape or form eddie and i haven't killed each other we managed to do 20 episodes so far which is Damn. freaking incredible Great, right? right we're like starting to get gray hair we're starting to get old like how the hell does this happen but exciting exciting guest today actually this is gonna be a very fun episode um and i think we're gonna get to a lot of high level discussion here about emails email signatures and building a company on nature so it's gonna be a lot of fun we have mr dan hanrahan i'm sure i pronounced that wrong did i say it right it's good no you, you nailed it thanks for having nailed me guys it took me um podcast nation like about 50 tries right before we started recording to make sure i pronounced it right so so it's, it's, first off dan one hell of a name so let's start you there it's like oh, you know okay. thank you, you it's 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 it, it just it's it rolls off the tongue you could be a superhero man it does, um, it does. i wasn't very good at spelling as a young guy so my parents put as few uh you know letters in my name as possible <laughs> <laughs> well listen man we're, we're pumped to have you so before we jump in i just want to ask for those who have no idea they've never heard of sigster before they have no idea who you are could you give like the thirty thousand foot overview of kind of who you are what you do and what you yeah, sure. So uh, again, my name is Dan Hanrahan. I'm the uh, founder of a, a business called Sigster. Uh, we're out of Indianapolis. Um, and at a very, very high level, we essentially unlock employee email as an owned marketing channel. Um, what that really means is, is we give marketers the keys to the employee email signature uh, to turn it into a, a call to action that's really important to the business. Um, and so we've been at it about a year and a half now. And uh, I'm to dig in with you guys and, and, and share more about that. Is this so, is this a Chrome extension or is it like a, a Mac mail plugin or something? Or are you talking about like a completely separate platform? No. So think uh, Gmail, Outlook, right? The uh, two primary systems that, that people use to send email from work, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we integrate with uh, with Gmail and we, we integrate with Outlook in, in, in a lot of different ways. But um, yeah, ha happy to dig into the technology more. But it's you know, something you can launch in just a couple minutes. Cool. So what I want to know is... When did you make a life decision? I'm going to put all my time, energy, and resources in the email signature. It's like, <laughs> right. what? Not, not a lot of people will do <laughs> that. Right? It like that. It does sound kind of ridiculous when you say it like that, but I yeah, don't. But, it but I really, because it's awesome. But I really my, want my, to know, like. My VP of sales told somebody that he was passionate about email signatures. <laughs> and and I kind of looked at him and I just started laughing. Um, and, and you know, at, at, a, at a surface level, it is uh, a, a little wild, but uh, it is really one of those businesses. Somebody called it a duh business right i mean it's so easy to understand and it, it's kind of like oh my gosh why why isn't that easier so it, it really is born out of a my experience so i was with a company called igo digital we had 60 employees and we emailed all 60 of our employees to ask them to copy and paste something into their email signature um companies right with 10 if you worked at a large business you've gotten an email sent to the entire organization that says hey follow these 10 steps and update your signature or copy and paste something uh, into been, your email signature Right. You've, we've all seen that experience and it's a mess and it's, you know, hard to control. And, uh, I, I, you know, we looked hard for a solution to, to just make it simple, right? A SaaS uh, a solution to control signatures, measure results like any other digital channel. And uh, at the end of the day, we couldn't find it. So we just went and built the thing. Nice. Very nice. So, That's it. Those are the best business models, right? The ones that are the ideas. <sighs> you got it. You got it. So why in the world did this not already exist then? If it's, if it's a duh idea, right. why was no one in this marketplace? Yeah, and, and you know, everything on its surface, you know, seem, it, you guys obviously know technology, you know startups, you know entrepreneurship, and everything on its Sometimes. surface seems like it would be, Every now it'd be really easy, right? Um, and as you get into it, uh, boy, there's a lot of nuances uh, to it. And, and there are, you know, a, a few companies, uh, you know, uh, not in the U.S. that 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 tackle the challenge and, and typically offer solutions either to IT uh, or uh, for the SMB. And, and so we've really uh, built Sigster with a focus on the enterprise and 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 serving uh, the marketer uh, of the company. And and so uh, the, yeah, great question in the comments is: Do you have any competitors that you are aware of? Yeah, we sure do. Um, 
you know, to, to, to name a couple of those guys, right. There's, there's the status quo, right. Which, which we all know, which is do nothing and continue to email all of our employees. Right. Um, and there's some other companies, right. I think there's one out of Australia called black Pearl mail, uh, which, uh, Eddie, I love the hat, right. I'm, I'm not sure you don't work at black Pearl mail. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What <laughs> I don't see a hat. Um, and another, uh, there's a couple of other uh, competitors out there that, again, sort of serving the SMB uh, and and sometimes focused on the IT organization. So you decide I'm gonna I'm gonna go full into this. So what was your team like? Yeah. Your founding team like what what was your role early on? What was your founding team okay. right? And like what, mm-hmm. what was the first days of starting? Yeah, so it was uh, out of the gates. It was it was a little interesting. So it was it was just me. Um, by design, I am not a developer, which uh, I have a ton of respect uh, for those folks. And so we, we, uh, I worked with a friend to build an MVP uh, after talking to a ton of marketers and saying, "Hey, should we go? Should we go solve this problem?" And 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 we just built the absolute bare minimum to get it out to market and get some feedback, gain some traction. Um, and, and then my first hire was my VP of engineering, which I uh, had worked with in the old days at I Go Digital. Um, so that's the skill set that, that I valued most. And, and so we brought in a leader there and, and he's built a, an awesome team around him. Um, since then we've also hired, uh, so for us, it's, it's sort of three things, right? It's, you got to sell the product, you got to build the product and you got to support your customer. And so we hired the leaders of those three groups, which are client success, sales, and engineering right out of the gates. Um, and then sort of filled in around them. So today we are 22 employees and, uh, you know, really a year outside of our, our public launch of the product. So did you guys go about raising money early on, build a product first, decide to raise money yeah. or are you like bootstrap and like, we're just going to generate revenue and go that way? You got it. So a, a little bit of both. The MVP was, was really bootstrapped. You know, it was me and, and, and uh, a friend that I paid to, to sort of just build a, a really tight uh, product out of the gates. Um, we ran with that for about, I don't know, maybe, I guess it's about six months and, and signed up 30 customers in this beta period. Uh, and then I went out to raise a, a small round, um, and and through that process, uh, my eyes were opened up into a bigger opportunity, and uh, we we raised a little bit bigger round and, and decided, hey, this isn't just a sort of a, a point solution, um, but employee emails, uh, you know, leverages itself to a uh, an incredible opportunity. Right, if you got more than fifty employees and you send email, we can help, and and, and so. We, we went we went bigger and decided that hey this is a business that that we can just dominate uh the space in and 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 really help in a big way so we raised a little bit more cash and have gone uh much uh, more quickly than i had originally thought we would so what is your typical client like what size yeah so uh we really target uh organizations with 50 or more employees we have a lot of people that come to Sigster, uh, sort of the inbound uh way and and right so those are some small organizations that might just be five or ten employees uh, and then with any outbound sort of uh, folks that we target, it's uh, typically B2B organizations, uh, 100 plus employees using Gmail or Outlook invested in something like a marketing automation tool. So they care about marketing. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've got customers, 200, 200 customers uh, from somebody that might have five or 10 employees all the way up through companies like Salesforce and Roche, um, you know, across the board. So how did you go about getting your first customers? Like how do you like, all right, we have this great idea. How the hell are we going to convince businesses yeah. to go and pay us money? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's an important part. Somebody asked me, I'll just share this quickly. They, they were they, This was the very early days. We didn't really have a product out in the market. So we had no customers, had no investors, and had no employees. And they, and they were like, hey, how, how are things going? I was like, this is awesome. I'm having a blast. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> that's not a very sustainable model, right? So, so we uh, the first thing before we build a product is I called every marketer that I knew. Uh, I'd been in sort of the marketing tech space for uh, for eight years uh, via Igo Digital, and then Exact Target bought Igo Digital. Um, and so I called every marketer I knew. I said, "Hey, we have this problem at Exact at Exact Target. We have this problem at Igo Digital. Uh, if if I go out and build a solution for it, will you buy? You know, would you would you buy it? Do you find it useful?" Um, and so I I just did that. Right, that my background is really sort of go to market and. I called everybody I knew. And then once we had a product, I called them back and said, Hey, you said you'd use this. If I built it, well, we built it. You know, will you use it? <laughs> Most of what them said it? yes. Okay. I was yeah. Say, what's <laughs> like? yeah. I mean, the beauty of Sixter is I think marketers struggle, right? Because a lot of, you know, if you're going to roll out a new ESP or you're going to, you know, roll out a new CRM or whatever, it's going to be a long uh, process uh, to, to see results. And so I think right. marketers sort of look for, for quick wins that, that are also impactful in a meaningful way. And so 
you know, I, I think most of them said, Hey, it's, it's, you know, $5 a user a month and I can launch it today. Uh, sure. I'll give it a whirl. And how, um, so guys, it's a pretty, how long uh, did it take you? So you reached that price point. Like, what was that discussion like? And how hard was that? Are you still trying to figure that out? Yeah, yeah. we are. I, th I think, uh, I, not to say that we've nailed it. Um, but as we rolled out, so more with the product, um, we've we've been able to uh, ask uh, for for a higher price point. Um, but it's always been a per seat model. Uh, I think that's that's very natural. You know, some companies say, "Hey, I've got this problem across 800 employees. I want to roll all 800 out on Sixter today." Others say, "Boy, I just I want this uh, really to be in the hands of my customer facing people, so my support team, my uh, uh, my sales team, uh, my marketing team." Uh, and some will will we'll start with a group and sort of have a bottoms up approach. Okay, I mean, it seems like something that you guys, I mean, at least from my experience, it's like something that will change over time anyway. And like the price point is something that you're always trying to figure out. Yeah, I think you're always trying to be smart and deliver value at the right price, now, right? Make it easy to buy and and ultimately easy to get return out of. So you've you've named and you've branded it Sigster, but do you have any plans yeah. to? eventually branch out outside the internet or outside the email signatures and do like a suite of marketing tools or is it like it's Sigster and that's it? Yeah. Well, there, there's so much opportunity, right? As I said before, every company with more than 50 employees that sends emails is an opportunity. So there's, uh, there's so much to go out and get. And then once we're in millions of inboxes, then we sort of have this platform, right? Email hasn't changed in, in a couple of decades outside of yeah. the web-based email client. Right. And so it's, it's yeah. a, a space where we, you know, we spend so much time and the, and the business has no idea what the heck is happening. The average employee sends, spends 28% of their day sending and reading email and the business has no idea whether or not that's a productive effort or not. Um, so there, and, and as, you know, as users of email, right, what's the worst, you go on vacation, you come back and your inbox is a total mess, but you know, your email goes down and, and, and you don't know how to work. So it's sort of this love hate relationship, right? Vacation you speak of. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, right? I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, I, get I, I hear they're awesome. No. Are you concerned at all awesome. about like with the rise of Slacks and hip chats and these type of yeah. platforms who are like kind of eliminating email, the email yeah. internally and mm -hmm. now project management, like even with clients yeah. and customer relationships? Are you like threatened by that? Do you feel like you're getting into a dying industry at all? Yeah. You know, it's funny because email has been dying in theory for, uh, I don't know, the last 20 years. Um, and so I, th I think email, the application of email as a, as a communication tool between my business and the outside world, I haven't seen anything that's, that's, uh, come close to, uh, replacing uh, the value of email. Now, yeah. when it comes to internal communication and, uh, and, and tools like Slack that allows us to use email in the right way and, and, and focus on the most important communications, right. With the outside world. Whereas, you know, whether it's, you know, chatter or, some chat tool or Slack or otherwise, I can communicate with my team, manage projects uh, with current customers, potentially even. Um, yeah. So I, 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 at the end of the day, right. Who sends the most email? It's companies like Slack, right. When I, get, <laughs> when, I when I get a notification in Slack, it's typically uh, read because I got an email reminding me to get into Slack and do something. So uh, right. yeah, I think they're awesome tools, but I, I think there's always going to be a place for, email. Now let's dive into actual email signatures for a minute. Can you talk to me a little bit about like examples of email signatures that you have found to be incredibly effective and some of the practices yeah. you put into place and maybe some case studies or AB testing things that just like you guys maybe are just mind boggling. Like maybe we should like put a screenshot of yours up there and like have him tear it apart. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do it? You want to do it? If you, yeah. You know, let's do it. How, how, how do we do with this? How do we do it? Like, let's, let's, I would love to see a screenshot it. link in the, uh, in the link. Can I do area. it? That's a good idea. All right, let's do it. Let's tear, let's tear our email. Oh, I'm going to put my personal right, cell phone number here. So I got to block out the cell phone. Yeah. Number. Right. Well, while you work on that, um, yeah, you know, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it, the email really is composed in our world of two parts. Uh, the first is, you know, name, title, it, uh, company name, company logo, the typical thing that you always think about in, a, in an email signature. Um, if you pull up an organization and you look at 20 signatures, it's likely they're all different. But, but we call that the business card. And so the business card, uh, brand it's all about brand. Make sure it's a consistent brand. It represents you well. If you've got images or links, let's make sure they're relevant and people care about them. So minimalist, but also uh, with balancing that with uh, usefulness. Uh, and then below the business card, there's what we call the, 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 the campaign or the call to action. 
uh, and the call to action should be relevant based on the sender, right? So if I'm in uh, HR, it should be, hey, check out our careers page, or we've got a referral program. If I'm in sales, it might be, hey, we're going to this event, uh, et cetera. Uh, so, so are you guys a, using like variables for those kinds of things? Um, so we. Uh, I can still hear you guys. Hear you guys, yeah. I'll boot Eddie off until he figures out what's going on there. So, all right. Okay. So, so yeah, so let's pick up his question though. Why I'm uploading this. Um, yes. I have no idea what Eddie asked. <laughs> so I think he was referring to is like, what have you, so based upon this effectiveness, have you seen like an ROI? Like have you had businesses turning yeah. down, like you have increased our sales or revenue or things in that nature yeah, of course. based upon what was happening? Uh I mean, it's a digital channel. We and it's we gotta we gotta measure it and we gotta show ROI or, or we don't we don't stick around, right? And so there's sort of uh, it's a one-two sort of approach with us. Um, one, we're gonna stand, you know, we're gonna, it's a brand play. Your uh, your signature is often viewed more often than your website, right? If you're a B2B organization, you 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 your people send more emails than you get people on your site. So the brand uh, consistency and impressions are important, uh, and then the campaign lends itself really nicely to how many times was it viewed, how many times was it clicked, what was the click-through rate. And ultimately, you know, did that person engage with my company and become a customer? Um, and so, yeah, for a couple of a uh, couple of quick examples, um, you know, six or uh, clicks uh, for events. So for registration, so with Salesforce, right? They've got a, a connections conference for the marketing cloud, and so prior to the event, they've got something in every person's email signature that says, "Hey, register for connections." Uh, when the event starts, everybody's email signature swaps over to uh, you know, follow the live stream. Uh, and then when the event ends, uh, it's, uh, hey, save this time for next year or check out our Forrester Wave report. Um, and so every single one of those, right, uh, we can track uh, to an individual click and, and ultimately did that person buy and attach dollars. So walk us through, what are some of the metrics you guys are collecting right now and why did you pick those metrics? Yeah. Ones? Yeah, marketing starts with reach and audience. And so the average employee sends 10,000 emails in a year, 10,000, right? 10,000 times we hit send uh, in a year. So if you got a hundred employees, you send a million messages, um, and it's a hand-picked audience. Most important customers, prospects, partners, right? It's hand-picked by your team every single day. Um, so that's sort of the top of the funnel, and, and then click rate is a half a percent on average across those sends. Um, and then depending on what happens from there, conversion could be I watched a video, it could be I downloaded a case study, or it could be I you know I, I clicked through and bought if I happen to be a, a site that actually uh, offers you know if it's a SaaS product that you can go buy right away, uh, or I you know scheduled a demo or whatever. Um, so click uh, display uh, six reviews, right? Uh, clicks, click rate, and then making it really easy to track all that through to your conversion funnel. Interesting, interesting. So. Name like without, I don't know if you can name companies or not, but they have a company turning yeah. you, but like you have directly increased my revenue by X percent or by X dollars. Have you started getting those metrics? Absolutely. Like people say, yeah. holy shit, what, what, this is incredible. How have I never done this before? Yeah. A couple, couple of examples. We were, um, we were at Roche, uh, a, a really regulated industry, uh, thousands and thousands of employees, global international company. Um, and we were there yesterday and it's also the really the challenge is is they they they're very regulated right it's uh, mm -hmm. uh they're in the medical space right it's it's uh they're they're very sensitive to following the right instructions from a marketing perspective and so um you know in in a, in a few weeks they had a a, a campaign live and, and and the manager literally said it's the most effective marketing tool we have because they can't do a lot of really you know they're, they're basically using employee emails a marketing channel so what they are they using send, for marketing uh, traditionally like what is their right hook they're trying to get people to do? Uh, so in this case, it's a, it's, it's a, I mean, this is a wild use case, but it's a tissue diagnostics group and it's a very, uh, right. Uh, six figure, uh, machine that essentially hospitals buy. And so they're targeting uh, hospital and healthcare organizations. Um, something that might be a little bit more tangible, uh, you know, with, with events, like let's just take events. So many like Dreamforce is coming up. So SaaS companies, right. Drive towards that event. And so a company called Terminus, um, had one out of every eight attendees to their event register via Sixter campaign. Uh, Angie's List uh, used Sixter in advance of a big customer event uh, and, and drove more registrations via the employee email signature uh, that, that than really any other channel that they measured, right, from a marketing perspective. Um, so it's 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 a you know conversion and success means different things to every business. Uh, bottom line dollars are, are are always there, and so what were the net new leads that resulted from Sixter is is critical as well.
Now, do you offer one of the things I think in places like Squarespace and template editors and MailChimp all face this problem, which is if you give too much creative control, people can create monstrosities, right? Instead of actual oh, effective boy. tools. So yes. how do you guys balance that fine art between we want you to be custom versus we don't want you right. to make this this terrible Mozart painting on as an email signature that everyone's gonna be like, what the hell? Yes. Well, first of all, if anybody sees any really awesomely terrible email signatures, we're sort of collecting those and because there's some horrible uh, ideas out there. And so, you know, one of the challenges, right, is just providing some best practices. Like you can't make an image in your signature, uh, you know, 400 pixels tall and, and, and have it just dominate. Right. Um, and, and so we, we provide some best practices, you know, use as few as images as possible, as few uh, links as possible, just to make sure that you make those count when you do use them. Uh, make sure your campaigns are less than 100 pixels tall. Uh, make sure to include a call to action. Um, you know, all those things are important. And so, uh, you know, giving some uh, candid feedback uh, is 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 important for our customers. So, all right, here we go. So we're talking. You want to talk about bad email signatures? Yeah. Well, well, before we go that, let's see how bad mine. I'm gonna put the link on here. Okay, you got it. Let's go find out what happens. Yep. Cool. I blocked out my phone number. So let's say it's. I'm gonna hit it. It should share somewhere. I think it's loading. Okay. It should be good. loading. Well, while we wait for it to load, we had we had a somebody sent us an email there. signature and, and on the side they had a picture of a of a guy that had just killed a deer and he thought that was really important to show in his email signature. <laughs> right. Oh, so my we've, we've got some some so so yeah, the bar's been set pretty high as to what uh shouldn't be done. I'm sure yours is uh lovely. So let's see. I put the link right there in the chat. So you click it, it'll open up. Oh, we got Eddie. Oh, we got Eddie. We got Eddie back. Okay, hang on. I'm going to pull this up here. Okay. I'm not sure if the uh, – yeah, so okay. This it, 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 A couple of things that are that are awesome. One, you uh, – it's not overbearing, right? <laughs> yes. You don't have crazy yes. images. And, I think it's and, PPS, uh, Josh. The, Yes. You, you you do have P S and P S S. Yes, please consider moderation, 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 P S S. You should watch my latest. As a fan, I think your microphone is coming up. Yeah, I might want to push it a little bit. Come a little staticky. Crazy. Oh, my apologies. I was so excited leading in, looking at the. There you go. There you go. Let's educate Josh real fast. Josh, postscript is what P S stands for. I don't think I think you wanted post postscript rather than postscript script. No, he has PSS here. Yeah, it should be PPS, right? Post postscript. You're right. I guess it should be. I've never done it. <laughs> Eddie, I've had how long have I had that on there for? I no didn't even. I don't it? see. So I don't see signatures. This is one of the things I want to ask you. When I use Boxy, it like truncates the signatures always, so I never see them. So. Joshua, if I look at this right at the top, I think you you did you've done great. It says you've got your first name, last name, your title, uh, the name of your company, and what your tagline is. We help entrepreneurs uh, make great apps and ideas become reality, which is, is super cool. And I like the sort of minimalist uh, execution there. And you've got I, should you put your email address and your email signature? That's a longstanding debate. I I am on the other side of the fence with this. Josh says we, I say it's stupid. I think you need yeah. it because let's say you have. You know, use the email as a reference point, and let's say it's in legal or contract discussion. It's a reference mm -hmm. point. That's why mm -hmm. I've always said you yeah, should email your email address is always included in the recipients. But with modern day emails, when people screenshot, it only just says your first and last name. It doesn't show the email in it, mm -hmm. so it adds that context. Yeah, I you know I, I think I think we see both sides. You know, we we don't show our email address and our signature email signature, but we have a lot of customers that do. And and you know, there's there's good and bad. I think to both for us, we we said, hey, you know, in most cases, people are going to know how to get a hold of us. Um, you know, if somebody, uh, and, and so we don't show it, but uh, we've got plenty of customers that do, and it's an easy thing to click on really quick if you don't, you know, hit reply or whatever. Um, so yeah, we, we don't show it. I, I think that's up for debate. You've got your website on there, right? The, the challenge on the website is, is it doesn't look like it's clickable. Is it clickable? Yeah, I don't it's know. It's clickable when it sends. It's not clickable on the temp on. on uh, the, right. The how, come, how come these links are? Because they're HTTPS links. I guess that is. Let's see. If I add www. Does it become clickable by default? You probably yes. add the HTTP. I add the I think, HTTP. I'm I editing. Think you put. 
Yeah, either way, I think yeah, that'll work. And, and then if it's it clickable, what's it say? Just command K it and it'll make it a link, right? There you go. Not all um, boxy either. Weird. Yeah, just, you know, if it's clickable, just, you know, make sure it looks clickable like the other links that you have here that are blue, right? Um, yep. So yeah, and then you know the PS and P PSS uh, or PPS, whatever this should be. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, that can can get to be a bit much if you're a large organization with thousand employees and everybody has free reign to do this. Uh, it's your business, right? And and uh, and every brand sort of balances, you know, personal expression versus brand consistency, right? In a different way. So I think that's just as a matter of what's important to you and as the CEO and founder of the business. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's good. I'd suggest to a large organization that they probably lock that down a little bit more for employees. But what about graphical what about elements? Graphics? You know, there's no graphics yeah. whatsoever. And I noticed with Sixer, you guys do use kind of a lot more graphical elements. We do. Yeah, we do. And, and, you know, considering the recipient is always important, right? So if I'm an organization that le uh, emails a lot of fortune 500 companies using outlook, that's going to block images by default. Um, I like, the approach of, of very few images and, and, and any sort of uh, call to action should be a, uh, right, a, a text sort of call to action as opposed to an image. Um, however, you can also kind of work around that and sort of uh, gracefully in, include things like alt text and otherwise to encourage people to download images. Um, at Sixter, we, we have a couple of images. We have our logo uh, that links to our website directly. Uh, so we don't include our, our website link, but we include a, a the, the logo that does that. And, and then we use the bottom. Uh, we've got, we do have two sort of social calls to action, Twitter and LinkedIn, which are very important channels for us that are very small and sort of subtle. Uh, and then of course, just our call to action, uh, the campaign around, you know, right now, I think it's promoting an event we're hitting in Boston here in a couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, we have, I think four total images in our, in our, our signature, but if images are stripped by the, by Outlook, right? Uh, iPhones, the iOS, uh, uh, mail, um, Gmail, those all display images by default. Um, and if, if, if images are stripped because we're sending to an outlook shop that blocks images, um, that it's the, this, the signature still renders, uh, well. Are you considering images now, Josh? I always consider it. <laughs> that what he's saying is about being stripped and stuff like that is the headache aspect yeah. of it. Now, so I want to actually go back yeah. to what I was saying before. A lot of email programs now, like for example, Google Inbox, just hides signatures by default. Yeah. So how are you guys coming? Yeah, there's so really it, nothing you can do, right? Yeah, and for for Inbox, you know, our our take is that the uh, the enterprise is is not yet right adopting uh, Google Inbox. Most large organizations are are oh are sending via uh, Gmail, via Outlook. Uh, systems along those lines, and so I think inbox uh, the intent is 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 interesting and and good. If you go out and search some of the chat rooms, right, like one of the challenges is there's no signature, right, and, and and you sort of hear people complain about that. Like, what do you do? Like, this is this is the other thing, right? I'm terrible about entering anybody into a CRM. I basically never do it. And so when I want to figure out how to call Josh, I search Gmail for Josh, and then I go to his email signature and I call Josh, right? So it's sort of like it's it's sort of my CRM. And I think in large organizations, right, the the opportunity for the brand uh, and the company uh, and contact information to 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 be there. Um, I'm not I'm not I don't believe that the, the inbox sort of approach of uh, that far uh, to the minimalistic uh, sort of end will 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 resonate for the for the enterprise. But if it does, we'll we'll continue to stay on top of it and and, and pivot. So where do you see emails for enterprise going then? If that's not yeah, so I, I think in general, um, I, I got to imagine something else will sort of compete with with Gmail and and, and with Outlook, right? Uh, and Exchange and, and and Google Apps, right? Um, but but we haven't. Google's seen, always introducing new competitors yeah. within itself. So I don't. Know. Right, right. Google will probably kill its kill its own uh, business with something um, that they create. Um, so yeah, I, I think more efficient use of email. I think using email for what it's intended for. Uh, here's the problem, right? That, that, I, that another big reason that, that we were so excited uh, to do Sixter is uh, take internal communications. I want to tell my entire company that, I don't know, uh, it's open enrollment period or to, 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 to remember to contribute to your 401k or I don't know, it's Hawaiian shirt day, right? Well, whatever it is. In, in order to get that information out there today, I typically email my entire company. 
Uh, I don't think you should do that, right? And, and so if but what does happen today is you will email people within your company all day long. And so what we're doing with Sigster is, is swapping out content so that if I only send a message, if I'm, I don't know, at, uh, uh, if, if, I, if I'm at HubSpot.com and I email somebody else at HubSpot.com, then awesome. That message should be in the, the call to action should be all about awareness uh, around internal employee communications. If I email external to my organization, it should talk about something else, right? And so I think just as mass marketing email has become more personalized, so if, if uh, some brand emails 20,000 people, it's not the same message to 20,000 people. There's elements of that message that are personalized based on what I've clicked, what I've bought in the past. And so I believe right. uh, individual email should start to walk that path of relevancy and, and, and drive more uh, awareness without having to hit send again every single time. Um, so I think the elements that have come from sort of mass marketing will, will trickle down into sort of an email. Cool. So two things here. One, how often do you change content in your signatures then? And then two, how do you control the different templates of when sending outbound versus inbound to your team messaging? Do you yeah. have it, like your email on yeah. recognizing or like, yeah, so great question. So in at Sixer, I mean, we're changing up our, our call to action weekly. Uh, here, here's the thing. The other thing that the world sort of hates is cold calling, right? And, and so we're very much invested in the idea of inbound. And so we invest in marketing content, right, constantly. And so we have a ton of content. And so we swap out our call to action and our signature routinely. Um, so the, the routine of, of how often you update sort of depends on your marketing strategy and, and the types of content and, and events or whatever else you might want to promote. But for us, I mean, we're literally changing it out every, every, every week, if not more quickly. So um, what are you, are you guys using tools internally to track conversion or whatever for these signatures in these different formats? Yeah. Yeah, we are. So it, we, we, it's part of Sixter, right? So we just track, we track displays, clicks, click rate. Uh, and then we append uh, UTM parameters. Uh, if you want to track those in Google uh, Analytics to any click-through link, uh, you can also append your own sort of tracking parameters. And we integrate with things like HubSpot, et cetera. So if you're tracking all marketing campaigns in a certain hub, then great. We just want to put the Sigster results alongside everything else, display advertising, uh, you know, whatever else you might be doing. Nice. Um, to, to the second part of your question, Josh, um, I think I answered the first part. The second part is how the heck do we execute on dynamic content in the email signature? Uh, and basically it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward, right? We, we, uh, upon compose, uh, add the, uh, to our Sigster link. Um, we add an encoded email address about who that recipient is. So it doesn't show up like the recipient email address and show up in our link. Uh, we encode that. And then on our, on our end upon open by that recipient, we know whether or not you're internal to the organization or external. And you can see where we can go down that path to uh, even get more relevant and personalized uh, beyond internal and external. So let's say I'm a startup. I'm one yep. of the listeners. I'm going to say I want to start using these email tactics to be effective. Sure. My question for you is how often should I be changing it? What is going to be my ideal right hook that we should be putting in there that you think is going to be relevant for a new company? And mm -hmm. what, what should be included in that signature? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, firstly, whether or not you use Sigster or, or, or another tool, um, you should really think about your email signature, right? I mean, there, it, it's going out there constantly and in a small company, it might be, uh, manageable if you've got five or 10 employees to sort of do that without a, a, a system. Right. Um, and as you get a little bit bigger and you want to do things like track analytics, uh, do dynamic content, et cetera, like you, you can always do that, but out of the gates, just, just to like what, what, what really matters. Um, and, and I think it just depends on the stage of your business. Going back to Igo Digital in my early days, we had a really complex product to sell and to understand. And so our, our emails, when we were trying to tell people what the heck we did, were just like paragraphs long. It was terrible. Nobody read it, right? <laughs> and, and so we put an explainer video, right? I'm not sure people still do a ton of that, right? But an explainer video in the email signature. So it was, hey, uh, we can drive your conversion rates by 10%. Check out a 60 second video on how we did that. Uh, yeah, it could be, it could be yeah, the, the, the video w wouldn't play necessarily in the signature, but it was more of a, Hey, you know, uh, it could be a, a, a GIF or a GIF or whatever, depending on what you want to call it. Um, ah, or, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, sweet. yeah, it's always fun, right? It, it's always, yeah. I don't want to get into it now. I don't want to, no, let's that. not do that. Um, 
but yeah, we, 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 you know, the call to action with the, the play icon, very prominent, like nobody wants to read email, but people will watch a quick video if, if you say something interesting in your first sentence or two. So uh, videos are great. Uh, events are incredible just because the people you want to meet at those events are the people that you email every day. Um, and, and then any, I think the questions you asked me, you were like, Hey, what, what's a, a quick case study you can offer. Right. Um, and it, even beyond that, the things that, that drive the most engagement is, is just helpful content. So we're making a shift at Sigster from talking about email signature marketing and employee emails as an owned channel in like every blog post to, hey, we serve digital marketers. Let's talk about some other problems that those folks have as well, whether that's content activation, uh, what events are the best digital marketing events. And so when we start to put those types of calls to action, then, then people engage, they read it, it's more helpful. And, and then maybe they, you know, they uh, like what we're saying and, and, and start to uncover more about Sigster there. So helpful content, videos, events, those are the things uh, uh, that, I'd, that I'd recommend as a, as, as whether you're a startup or uh, a large business to, to think about. Now, do you practice good emails too on top of good email signatures? Like email, I'm serious. Like, do you put a yeah. sign in the emails? I, mean, I feel like she's, not, she's obligated to. You, you, <laughs> I, I sure hope our team is not sort of abusing the it's channel. Like, and, it's like and, if your and, doctor uh, went home and just like treated their body like shit. Like, yes. It wouldn't do that. Right, right. You see your doctor walking out smoking cigarettes and, you know, yeah. a pint. The dentist is over there like eating candy, <laughs> not even brushing their teeth. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, that's probably a great content angle is like just, and, and we should we should think about that more. It's, it's digital marketers. It's it's email as a channel. It's important to our business. How the heck to, 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 to treat it with respect and not abuse it. So let's talk about like email etiquette for a second. Like, sure. Oh boy. What? No, let's, let's like talk it. about it. Let's like, we actually had on a couple episodes ago about how, this new phenomenon of um, if someone, if you don't respond back to an email within 24 hours, just send you an animated GIF of someone being like patient like this. Oh gosh. If things of yeah. that nature. So let's just talk about like, what are some of the practices that you instill yourself that you're, that yeah. you should be the way people should treat email and what you think yeah. listening should apply to. Yeah. Okay. So whenever I'm trying to figure out whether or not, it, we, we have new reps or whatever that will come into Sigster and we'll write uh, an email and, 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 and we'll say, hey, is this a good email or a bad email? The first thing I'll do is I'll pull it up on my phone, right? And I look at my email on my phone and, and, and I want to see what the subject line is. And then you know how it looks on, at least on my iPhone, you see like the first sentence. So if the subject line isn't impactful and meaningful, if that first sentence doesn't get right to the point, then I just delete the message they just sent, right? And we sort of so start over. Most commercial emails fail at that because their first sentence is like, if you're having trouble ex viewing this email, blah, blah, blah. And that's the thing that gets into the, the preview. Right. That's all. Right. It's terrible. It's terrible. And really if your first sentence is like, about. yeah, if your first sentence is something along the lines of, uh, hey, you don't know me, but I wanted to drop you a quick line to blah, 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 blah. It's like, I don't know you. Okay. How about delete your message? <laughs> so uh, an email to a client typically I'll start yeah. with, hey, Hope you had a great week or a weekend or whatever. Yeah, and then I get yeah. and then I get into it. But I feel like that's yeah. the first sentence that they're seeing. Yeah, sometimes exactly. it is, and 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 so you know we just I think regardless what that first sentence is, brevity is critical. People are busy. They they have right. a lion's share of email. You're interrupting their day uh, to say something, uh, and 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 so we we've got to really work on a concise message. Uh, with with a uh, you know a crisp ask or, or or offer some value in that message as well if we're going to interrupt you uh, in, in in your day and so it starts with the subject line and the first sentence um, but but you know as people read messages on mobile devices they've got to be crisp concise well written uh, right gra gra grammatically correct uh, all those things are are, are you know th those don't go away um, and you don't get an opportunity to write a novel in an email yeah so. If your email is lengthier than let's say three hundred characters, and it doesn't, would your rule of thumb be? And this is something I'm curious. Hmm. This is more worthy of a phone call than an email. Like how how do you balance that line between digital communication and real communication? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I mean, you guys know how email is. It's it's like you know, get to the point, and and then if there's something to discuss, hop on a call, right? Um, and so for us, it, it, I go back to the only way to keep emails short. Is to, to to be respectful, right? Write something there, and if, if you want to learn more, right? Here's a, here's a way to go do that. Whether that's read a blog, uh, attend an event, uh, watch a video, uh, whatever it is, right? Um, uh, schedule some time to talk, right? One of the things people, some salespeople will put in their email signatures is a link to something like Calendly, 
or something along those lines where you can access my calendar and we don't have to go through that 15 email exchange to try to coordinate some time. Um, so depending on your role and, and what's important to you, um, you know, saying something concise, adding value, and, and then having having some way to learn more, whether that's you know schedule some time or click on some resource or watch some video or whatever. So, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, Perfect. I want I want to ask you more about the just the, running the business. Um, so yeah, starting starting Sigster and trying to get things off the ground. You know, it's it's always fun. The startup startup lifestyle is great. It's a, it's yeah. nerve wracking and exciting all at once. It's wild. Where does what is your typical week like? Like breaking it down for you, like what you're spending your time doing, how much time you're spending doing. Yeah. Well, I know what it should be, and then I'll tell you, but I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. No, tell me both. Yeah. So you know, there's sort of three things that I try to, and I, I try to look at this uh, and and be a little bit thoughtful about it. But and so I try to make sure that the lion's share of my time is spent on one of three things: uh, team. Right. Make at the end of the day, we got to hire great people. We got to take care of them. We got to treat them well. I got to make sure they're happy. I got to understand what they think and where we think they think we should go, et cetera. So, team is number one. The second is adoption of our product. Uh, so, making it simple to buy, simple to launch, simple to use, make you want more, right? Because it works so well. And, and then the last piece is leverage, right? And so, there's there's a few things that add leverage to our business. That's an incredible product, and incredible marketing. There's more, but those are the things that I that I really think about because it, you know rather I th here's the worst case scenario I've got 20 reps that make 40 grand a year and they're all mad because they should be making more or I have like five reps right making 200 grand a year because the leads are coming to us because we're offering good content via marketing and they get into the right. product and the product is amazing right so I want I want fewer salespeople better marketing better product. Uh, and that's what I think about when I think about leverage. So team adoption and leverage. Um, in reality, so, it's it's uh, it's a little different, but that's what I try to uh, align myself to. How much of your time personally as, as the founder is still spent in those discussions about leverage and with the marketing people? Um, I, I wish I could say all of it. Uh, I, I, so before getting into the marketing tech world, I spent eight years in, in, uh, in, in a recruiting sort of startup, right? Um, and, and so it... Boy, I, I hold that like who are we going to bring in next? We've only got twenty two employees, and and the next one is is a huge impact on our business, and and, and so uh, I want to talk to everybody uh, and make sure that we retain the people that we have, right? So I, I do spend a lot of time there. Uh, I have an awesome leader on the product side, and I trust him to pull me in uh, uh, whenever needed. But I, I still stay close to that, and and we're talking daily. Um, and on the marketing side, uh, we're we're really the first person that we hired on the marketing side. The guy's awesome, uh, and he's a wizard at, at at tracking. Right, his his best thing is like is like Brad. Did this work? Most marketers can't quite tell you. Brad will pull up a spreadsheet and he'll tell you, yes, it worked. Here's exactly how it worked. Here's how it compared to everything else that we did. And so we've and been able to fill around him with some awesome people too. How did you recruit him? How did you find him? Was that like an organic process, or was that like someone yeah. recommended you? You know, ironically. Uh, Brad was a cust he he was a uh, he was a he was a marketer at a customer and he was the six admin, um, and so Brad used the product uh, from the customer standpoint, uh, and and then you know over over time there was an opportunity that we had available at Sixter and and he kind of reached out and things went from there. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really good. Every, everybody we've hired uh, to, to date has been a referral. Um, hiring is hard. Hiring, especially in the early stages, when you got to get it right. You can't waste time. It's the only thing that matters, right? Um, as not, you know, as a as a startup guy, right? Uh, you, you guys probably do the same thing. You you tend to want to do it all, um, <laughs> yeah. but but there's basically, you know, there's a lot of people that are way smarter than me, <laughs> and and so there's a few things that I, I I want to do. I want to be involved on 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 really sort of game changing deals and sort of partner opportunities, and I want to be involved on, in hiring. Um, yeah. th those are the things that I love. And I think those are the things where I had the most value. And I got to hire people that are amazing engineers and amazing marketers to, you know, to, to be way better than I could ever be and trust them to do the and, job. Yeah. And you have to be able to trust them. That's a really important part. Yeah. So, so talk, talk about some of your marketing strategies, like how you've managed to grow from a, we're a new company no one's heard of to now we're a brand that people yeah. are aware of. So talk about some of the strategies you've yeah. and how you've been successful there. <laughs> so we're curious about T-shirts. It's t-shirts, man. It's all t-shirts. It's a I'm, gonna, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm sort of joking, um, but we. So the way that we break it down, uh, Bailey is entirely responsible for for identifying the people most influential in our space. 
right? So whatever business you're in, like who are the people that, that, you know, when they say something, everybody else listens, whether it could be a company, it could be an individual. Um, and, and then she's also responsible for events. And the way we decide on whether or not to go to a big marketing event is our influencers there. Uh, and then we wear t-shirts and we, 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 we go out and right. And we tweet and we do all the, the other things that you would, you would think about, but events and influencer marketing are critical to us. Uh, and, and we're starting to invest, in, but, but at the top of that funnel is we got to measure everything. We went to an event, we uh, did this AdWords campaign. We put this uh, signature campaign out there. What were the results? Did it, did it work? And what do we do more of? Um, and then the, the third bucket there. So, so is, is really content. Uh, and we're really refining our content strategy today to make sure it, it uh, that the mix of content we offer is is maybe a little less Sixter focused, a little more digital marketing focused, uh, right. and, and so a little bit more of, helpful. What platforms are you guys focusing on, and what kind of content is it? Uh, is it like blog posts, yeah. uh, videos, uh, like live yeah. tweeting, or I don't? What are you guys doing? Yeah, you know, to to, to date, we've uh, we sort of have an activation strategy. Content typically starts on our blog. Um, and, and then when it lives on our blog, then we, you know, we have a promotion strategy, right? Uh, there's, there's probably some form of that goes to LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter or Facebook. We use our employees to share content a lot. Uh, clearly the email signature, uh, is important for us. Um, right. <laughs> right. That goes without saying. Um, but we're starting to get more, you know, less blog focused and, and offering more video content. We, uh, just hired a new content marketer who has a background in sort of radio and advertising as well. So she's going to, uh, in addition to creating content, uh, also look at podcasts and webinars, um, uh, things that are digestible get, uh, in a little different way. They should get you on a podcast soon. I know, I know. Well, you guys were influencers. So Bailey was like, those guys know everybody. Let's get Dan on there. So she uh, probably regretted it now. You guys might be too. I don't know. I mean, I get the captain here. So if anyone knows anyone, it's going to be the captain. What? Aye, aye. Uh, aye that's aye. great. So, all right. So, that's great. Let's let's go into more deeper discussion, and which is what's been some of okay. the biggest failures you guys have had that you've had to overcome. Oh yeah, I like yeah, this question. it's good. I think the so I'll, I'll go back. I'm going to go back maybe even before Sixter, and then I'm going to share Sixter failure too. Um, so when I first when I was transitioning out of uh, technology recruiting and growing that business in the services space, and I wanted to 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 run a software company, and we recruited a ton of software developers and placed them in amazing places. Um, I can't write a lick of code. Like I'm terrible. Uh, that's the last thing you want me to do. Um, and so I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I tried to start this first business and I, I hired a contractor to, to build a product. Um, I didn't know how to write requirements. I, I didn't know how to manage expectations. I didn't know what was important to him. And most importantly, he wasn't an equity partner. He wasn't a, uh, on salary. He was just sort of this part-time contractor that I expected to build a product that I was going to build the business around. We failed in three months, spent 10 grand. So it was really fast. It was a really fast lesson. Um, that was in 2008. And from there, I, I went back and I found, I didn't care what we did. I didn't care what the idea was. I just wanted an awesome developer and I wanted an awesome sort of project manager, business analyst, uh, client success kind of a guy. And so I found two uh, uh, people that I trusted that I thought were, were, were the best in that space. And, and we went and built a company and that, that, uh, turn into something really successful. Um, so I think you know, my biggest failure was not recognizing how important engineers are. Uh, and if you're a product company, you, you better have somebody that's more than a contractor, right? Hopefully they're at least an employee, if not an equity partner in the business uh, at your side, willing to stay up late when, uh, when a big opportunity comes in or, you know, you know, when something goes wrong, right? Which it's right. software, right? So, so that was, yeah, that sort of set me up for, for Sigster and, and, uh, and you know, when we got into Sixter, the first thing that, that I did was bring on an amazing engineer um, to as our VP of engineering, and, and he's been fantastic. And so, uh, but the, the failure, like, so, okay, I got that right. I was gonna screw something else up, of course, uh, we all do. And so the, the, the hardest thing with Sixter, I've, I've said this a couple of times, any business with more than 50 employees uh, that sends email is a potential customer. Well, guess what? That world's really big. And we had to make, we had, until we had more focus, uh, around the right kind of customer and the right at the end of the day, you, we can't tell stories that are relevant to that, to that world. So we had to slice and dice it uh, much more granularly and find verticals that we can serve well and, and tell the case studies and uh, uh, share those stories. Um, we had to, you know, uh, you know, find people that we knew cared about marketing and add that as a criteria. And we did that through, uh, we use a tool called data to find out whether or not you use a marketing automation uh, program. 
because uh, that indicates that, hey, you care about marketing, you've got things to share and, and, and you're doing something there. So uh, when we didn't have focus, we screwed up. Uh, we wasted a lot of time. We didn't know who we could help the best. Um, and, and, you know, as we get bigger, we can expand that focus. Uh, but, but that was probably the biggest failure out of the gates and, and sort of limiting the business uh, in terms of our trajectory was was not focusing quite enough. What is what, so talk to me about your daily routine? Like you wake up to go to bed. What, yeah. Like what time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? How are you delegating <laughs> your company, personal life? Yeah. I, I'm making fun of myself because last night I went to bed at 830. Because the, the prior <laughs> night, I was, I was up till one and woke up at 4.30. <laughs> so I told my team I went to bed at 8.30 after I put my son to bed and they all made fun of me, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, typically, I mean, it's, there, there, there probably isn't a schedule or a routine. Like, it's just different, right? As I've got three young kids. Um, we've, we've got Sigster, which is on this uh, growth trajectory that, that requires a lot of effort and time. Um, and you know, 22 people have have taken the time to to come join us on this, and so that's you know, it's really important that they get on the right side. So, uh, yeah, I, I try to unplug um, when I get home, maybe around six, until my kids go to bed around eight. Uh, I try to see them in the morning, uh, right? I'll wake, you know, so I'll go to bed at maybe I don't know, eleven or twelve, and then I'll you know, wake up at uh, yeah, hopefully six, right? So I can hop online and do a couple of things before my kids wake up. And then I want to hang out with my kids and turn my phone off and hang out with them. Uh, and then when the weekend comes around, hopefully I've, I've, I've put in enough effort uh, during the week that I, you know, I can hang out with my kids or my wife. I, I should say my wife too. She's sort of important. Um, but <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, there's that, that's kind of how it is. Uh, but you know, one of the reasons I, I going back a little bit, uh, I go digital was acquired by exact target. And so I went from 60 employees and being very close to the fire of the business to 2000 employees. Um, and I, you know, for a year I traveled every week and, uh, that wasn't, that wasn't the right balance. And so, you know, one of our core values at Sixer is balance, right? Like you, it's not a nine to five job, but, but, but sometimes like you've, you've kicked butt, you've taken care of your team. You got to get the heck out of there and go do what's important to you. We all sort of come to work as a, you know, I believe a means to an end. Um, work is not the end in and of itself. Right. And so trying to understand what my team cares about, uh, making sure they know that my family is important to me. Uh, the right. most important thing to me, right? And sort of, you know, we, we have a pretty transparent dialogue around that. Yeah, so to that, on that note, I kind of wanted to ask you, since the team element is so important, what are some tips that you can give us to like establishing the kind of culture that you guys have as Sigster? Like, what are you guys doing to, yeah. to bring that culture? Um, there, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and, you, you, you know, culture is one of those things that, you know, nothing creates culture like winning. Uh, I'm going to steal that from a couple of other folks that I've heard it from. Um, and, and so, you know, coming in and kicking, kicking butt, right. And taking care of our customers and adding new customers and launching amazing product like that creates excitement. And then we can go out and have some drinks and celebrate and enjoy ourselves. Um, so I think that's foundational, but one of the things that in, in my first, uh, first job, uh, my manager asked me to do, he, he said, Hey, we write your goals and, and, and give me, your goals. And I, you know, at the time I was 22 and that seemed a little fluffy. And so I ignored him a couple of times and then finally he asked me like a third time. And so, you know, it's just a simple one page, uh, not a lot of fluff, one year and three year personal and professional goals. I handed that to him. The, but the cool part was he handed his to me. Right. And so we sat down and I knew why he was coming to work. He knew why I was coming to work. And so we've done that with every employee at Sigster. Uh, you know, they see my goals, uh, uh, they share uh, theirs with with me or their their hiring manager, whatever it might be. Um, and then at the end of the day, like, hey, I know you want to go live in Paris, France for a year or two, um, or I know that you want to, right? Uh, you know, get an RV and and take a West Coast trip and get all the specific, national parks with your kids. Yeah, examples? yeah, these are a couple of specific ones. So it's like you know, when we talk, it's like, hey, man, how the hell are we going to get you in that RV out at oh, you know that's, Yellowstone or whatever? That's great. <laughs> and and so it just uh, we we're all people, right? And, 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 and the business is here to help serve us. Uh, we got to take care of each other first. And, and, but at the end of the day, we're people and, and we come to work with, uh, with an end in mind. It's fantastic. So what do you want your legacy to be? Hmm. 
at first foremost, I got to provide for my family, take care of my family and, 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 and do that in a way that's not like an absentee provider. Right. So that's the most important thing to me from a business perspective. Um, uh, you know, it, it sort of comes down to, um, I, maybe two things. I, I like looking back and seeing that we created something that created a lot of not only jobs, but, but help people sort of, you know, tackle those goals that they had. Right. And so when I go back and I see somebody that we hired, like, here's a quick example from, uh, from I go digital, we had uh, like three 24 year old people selling seven figure deals into companies like Procter and Gamble and Best Buy and, and, and other companies. So we get acquired by exact target. And I'm like, Hey, they're like, who's your enterprise guys. And I was like, those are my enterprise guys. And they're like, they're 24. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I love about startups, right? Is you get to do, uh, you know, pardon my language, but you can do shit that's like way beyond your pay grade at a very young age. And the people that do that are 24 and 25 and, and they're just, you know, in their careers at such a more profound level than, than the other folks. So uh, ultimately they got their enterprise job at, at that business, but it, it, it didn't start that way. It, it had to take a little bit of time to, to sort of get them into that role. So that's the legacy, right? You, you go around, you see people that you, uh, you, you, you had some fun with, you worked hard, you came out the other side, you accomplished some awesome things uh, and you still like each other. <laughs> that, 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 that damn successful. Yeah. Cool. I mean, where's, I, I was going to ask, where's Sixer going? Like, where's your grand vision of where to Can you yeah. drop any secrets, any, any upcoming products? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. You never know. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I think when people ask where we're going, it's really easy to start talking about numbers. Um, we, we've, you know, when I, when I shared that story about going out and raising the first round of capital, again, we were going to just raise a little bit of money and hit a couple of milestones and sort of slow grow Sigster. Um, and, and Scott Dorsey, who was founder CEO of exact target sold to Salesforce, um, and, and, a, a Eric Tobias, Mike Fitzgerald and Christian Anderson are guys in Indianapolis that were, had had very successful outcomes. Um, and we're putting that back into, uh, a venture studio and, and, and it was launching. They were the same guys that already called to ask to invest in Sigster. And, and they called me back and said, guys, uh, Dan, I, I think this is a hell of a lot bigger than you're thinking uh, today. And, and I was like, well, that, I, I see the vision to what I'm driving towards. Um, the reason I haven't thought a little bit bigger is because I haven't done that before. And, and they had at, right it very, very successfully. And they were like, okay, we're going to help you, right? We're going to dig in. You're going to be in the office space with us. Uh, and who the hell knows email better than Scott Dorsey, uh, right? And so it's like he built an email business and sold it for a couple billion dollars. So that's great. That's and so the numbers awesome. aren't important, but uh, the the predictable outcome with with those guys at our side, and, and you know we're going a million miles an hour, and so these slight adjustments in our trajectory ultimately change the course of the business and, and how successful we are. So uh, we're we're not building a you know, and I'm going to use numbers again. That's not the important part. The, the important part is creating a, a company where, where where people advance their own goals, right? Um, but you know, we're not building a five or ten or twenty million dollar business. You know, we're going to have hundreds of employees and and, and billions in revenue, uh, and and we're going to do that on the backs of uh, employee email um, and and staying really focused in the near term on executing uh, uh, our strategy today uh, to create a platform after we're in millions of inboxes where, where we have a ton of opportunities and productivity and data and content. Um, so, so it's a, you know, it's not a one or two year quick exit type thing. It's, you know, it's, it's fast. It's, it's wild. Uh, we've got awesome people and good people leading us. That's awesome. I'm really excited for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's fun. If you could go back to the very, very, very beginning and tell yourself one thing of advice, what would it be? And probably enjoy the, uh, enjoy it. Because if I look back at, at what we did at I go digital, um, you know how it is, right. And, and it, I mean the, the ride, if you're, if, I'm going to see if I can get my, right. If you're, if you're at point a going to point B and the, the line looks like this, uh, in a big company, it might actually look like this, right. Where it's a very flat, uh, curve and in a startup world, right. It is, uh, up and down and up and down and crazy and wild. And, and then you, you do something amazing and it's like, Hey, yes, you high five, you go chug a beer with your buddies and that uh, you work with. And, 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 and then, uh, and then you're on to the next milestone. And so, you know, one of the things that, that we, we did after, 
So between Exact Target and Sigster, I was going so fast. I was traveling every week. Um, I didn't have enough time to enjoy the journey of Igo Digital. I didn't have. Uh, I, I wasn't disciplined enough to, uh, uh, in, you know, really enjoy and understand what I was learning at Exact Target and the connections that I was making. And so I, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't proactive enough to be able to say, "Hey, I'm going to do this next." So my wife and I basically talked uh, very late night on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> we might have been influenced a little bit, um, and I basically said, "Hey, I'm going to get you know, I'm going to give Exact Target three months' notice. It's been an incredible journey, but I can't continue to do this, and and I don't know what I'm going to do." So we just decided to uh, build a log cabin in Bloomington, Indiana, which is where we both went to college. Take our family there. It had electricity and everything. I'm not like Paul Bunyan. Is that, but... is that by the mall? In in Bloomington? Oh, wait, is there? Wait, where's the Mall of America? Is that that's Bloom Bloom in that yeah, Bloomington, uh, Minnesota? That's Minnesota. I'm was, sorry. I'm sorry. It, it was next to, it was next <laughs> to a bunch of trees, basically. Is what it was next to. Right, right. <laughs> and my only goal in that time period was to, uh, you know, hang out with my family and meet smart people and 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 be very reflective and thoughtful about what the heck I I should do next. Um, and so we we lived there. You know, it was, it was 15 minutes from Indiana University and and civilization, but it felt like you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that was that was a really uh, important time, and that's really where Sixter launched. So. Uh, just having that that bit of time to be reflective and thoughtful and and to answer your question, I, I sort of enjoyed the journey after the fact, and and I knew this next time around that I that I wanted to uh, work my butt off, create something awesome, but 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 pause from time to time and remind myself that hey man, this is actually really fun. Uh, it's really fun work. So why Indianapolis? Why do you guys? Why do you, guys be there? you know, I'd like. I don't know if we're here as a result of me living here. Sixer wouldn't exist without Indianapolis, right? If you look back at Indianapolis, so I mentioned the, the Scott Dorsey thread. Uh, Eric Tobias was the founder and president of, of Igo Digital. He's another one of those four partners. Um, Christian had invested in my business in 2008, and Mike Fitzgerald had actually acquired Igo Digital for Exact Target. Those are the four partners at, at High Alpha. They all have incredible marketing tech and branding experience. Uh, when we went to do our uh, – our, our, our seed round, the guy that led that was a guy named Bill Godfrey. And, and Bill, prior to Exact Target, was this uh, a wildly successful, sort of the first marketing automation pl uh, platform, which sold to Teradata. It was called a Primo. And so now we've got Scott Dorsey and, and Bill Godfrey uh, here. And, and the beauty of Indianapolis is it's small enough that people care, right? The big companies here will give a startup an opportunity. Uh, and then you've got that big company logo to go find the next business. If I was somewhere like Silicon Valley, right? Boy, I bet it's really difficult to get the ear as a startup of a big business because there's a thousand other people try, trying to do the same thing. And so Over Indianapolis sure. has this, yeah, it, it has this incredible, uh, it's seen a few really successful exits in the marketing tech space. The companies that gave them a shot in the early days liked that journey. They want to do it again. Uh, and we've got leaders here to, to sort of help shape it. So uh, although I'm from Indianapolis, this is, I believe it's the best place to start a, a marketing tech business. Uh, the support here is incredible. Wow. Awesome, man. So how can people learn more about Sigster and how can they reach you and, you know, how can podcasting? Yeah. Podcasting? Where's all this awesome content coming from? Is this the Sigster blog? Yeah. So the Sigster blog is, is probably the, uh, the lion's share of our content, but just uh, Sigster's S-I-G-S-T-R.com. Um, uh, and, and, you know, there's a million ways to reach out to us and connect with us there and engage with us, whether you're just curious, you have an idea, if you're an awesome engineer, uh, if you want to come work here, we, all those things are important. So, um, I, I'm fascinated by, uh, anybody sort of on this startup journey. Um, LinkedIn is, has been my number one tool throughout my career for hiring, uh, finding employees, uh, finding investors. Um, so I'm always eager to connect with other people and, and we've had so much help along the way to get to where we are. Um, there's a, there's a ton that I can learn, uh, and I'm always happy to, to engage with other, uh, other, other people, wherever that might be. So, um, thanks for this, uh, this opportunity. You guys are, you guys are kicking butt and, um, uh, I'm, I'm humbled to be on here. Yeah. Thank you for being on, man. You guys, everyone, this is Dan Sixer app. Go sign up. Let them know that chop dog, the podcast sent you, uh, yes. and let us, let us know what your conversion rate is after you start using some awesome email signatures. Dan, yeah. thank you so much, man. It's been a pleasure having you. We're definitely going to have you again. 
And you've been listening to episode 20 of the podcast. Yes, it's episode 20. I'm just going to keep repeating it, Eddie, until it's drilled in my head so I don't forget. And then you're going to uh, say it for 21. They're going to be like, this is, yeah, episode- it's, this is episode 21. Um, so you've been in this episode 20. And just a reminder, if you, need, if you need a team to help build your mobile app, your web app, your wearable app, and be a strategic partner with you for the long haul, just like what Dan was saying, reach out to us at chopdog.com or go to hire.chopdog.com. Three quotes, free proposals. Thank you, everyone. And Dan, thank you again, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Honored to be here. Good luck. Thanks.